Today is finally the day where AMD is launching their Ryzen 7000 X3D chips, or at least two of them, where the Ryzen 7 7800 X3D is slated to come out actually a little bit later than the two that are being launched today. The Ryzen 9 7900 X3D, which is 12 cores, 24 threads, and then the Ryzen 9 7950 X3D, which is 16 cores and 32 threads. However, only eight cores and 16 threads on these both these chips and also the upcoming 7800 X3D are the gaming cores and threads that you want because they feature the extra cache on board or the extra faster memory that makes games smoother and gives you more average FPS as well as more 0.1% and 1% lows, which is what a lot of gamers who want the smoothest experience on PC gaming so desire. And just like the Ryzen 7 5800X3D, this chip does deliver a very good gaming experience. Though I do have some reservations about this chip, which we'll talk about towards the end of the video, where me personally, I don't know if you guys have seen the cores and the thread counts, but if I was a gamer and I wanted this experience, I'd personally be waiting for that Ryzen 7 7800X3D because it's got a few benefits on top of not just having a cheaper price point. But again, we'll talk about those things a little bit later because in today's video, we're doing a different comparison to what you're used to seeing where I'm gonna be taking the Ryzen 7 5800X3D, comparing it against the i9-13900K and then comparing that against the Ryzen 9 7950X3D in a side-by-side -side comparison with all the FPS numbers. And then we'll show you the 0.1% and 1% lows on the graphs afterwards to see if you really need this kind of FPS and what you're missing out on if you go for one CPU over the other and vice versa. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Now we've got two of the latest and greatest fancy effects titles in today's video. And then I've also decided to throw in three competitive multiplayer titles that are played for serious money by pros. However, let's get on to the first one here. That is Hogwarts Legacy, where the 7950X3D did pretty much the same as the i9-13900K, and then the Ryzen 7 5800X3D was falling behind by, when I looked at the charts after I did all the benchmarking, it's falling behind by four average FPS. So at 4K high settings, the CPUs here were pretty much all maxing out an RTX 4090. And I mean, if you start chucking more settings up to ultra and things like that, then you're only gonna get lower FPS and that's gonna be more of a GPU bottleneck, which means that all three of these CPUs are absolutely fine for this game. Though onto the next one here, Atomic Heart. This is a game just like Hogwarts Legacy that has all that fancy glitter. And it's also got things like DLSS 3 and other things that you can turn on to make higher FPS. However, at 4K high settings, I was able to get over 250 average FPS on all three of these CPUs. And I was finally able to get to a scene where I could just replicate a battle for benchmarking. And here's where the Ryzen 7 5800X3D actually scored a victory over the Ryzen 9 7950X3D. It was actually quite bizarre. This is the only title in today's video where this did happen. But let's move on to some competitive titles here with the first one being Fortnite. This is at 4K low settings. And here is where we're getting over 400 average FPS on both the 5800X3D and the i9-13900K. However, you'll notice that the 7950X3D actually scored the victory here with over 500 average FPS. But one thing that was weird about this game was that the i9-13900K ended up coming out with the highest 0.1% lows. And then also the AMD 7950X3D came out with the highest 1% lows and average FPS. So it was a little bit of a weird mix here, but all three of these CPUs, you could play an extremely competitive game of Fortnite. And so I think if you can't get a victory with over 400 average FPS, then perhaps it is not the hardware's fault. They're going on to Apex Legends. This is a game that is capped at 300 FPS. However, the 1% and 0.1% lows are anywhere but always 
going near 300 in this game. So at 4K low settings, here is where we got the 5800X3D actually scoring a slight victory over the other two, even though it had slightly lower average FPS. So I was really uh, bizarre to see this. But again, this one does come down to variance since I am playing real multiplayer games in these three comparisons just because the packets are getting sent over the internet in real time and that's something another dynamic that i do wish to test with all three of these cpus just to give you guys an outlook on okay if i go out and get one over the other am i losing or missing out on any big performance but when it comes to apex legends all three of these cpus will do an absolutely fine job however the 5800X3D did slightly score a victory on the 0.1% lows. So that was actually really good to see considering it is the cheapest option of all three of these on the group here, as well as having the cheaper motherboard costs and the cheaper DDR4 platform costs. However, onto Dota 2, one that I do play in my spare time. I really enjoy games of Dota 2, and this one's capped at 240 FPS, and we're playing at 4K maximum settings here because the RTX 4090, at least in this benchmark, can max this game out at 4K and with incredibly high FPS. And here is where benchmarking through Enchantress, that's the character I'm playing, I was getting the best results on the i9-13900K on the 0.1% lows and the 1% lows. And then when it came to the average FPS, they all scored 239 average FPS. And after looking at those numbers, it's time to focus now on the Ryzen 9 7950X3D and who's this CPU for? And I don't think it's for a whole lot of people. Uh, if you want the performance that you're seeing in today's video, and you wanted it at a better price, I would much rather wait for the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. That's going to have those same 8 cores and 16 threads with extra cache that you want for gaming. And what I tested here was if the games go past those 8 cores and 16 threads, then the cores essentially desync and you go back to having lower uh, performance than you would have otherwise had on those eight cores, 16 threads. So what happens here is AMD's prioritizing when you're playing games with the 16 core, it's prioritizing all the frames on those eight cores, 16 threads with the extra cache. So it's a bit of a funny thing where you're really just getting a half gaming CPU that can double down and have 16 cores, 32 threads if you need that. And the people who need that and they're focused on productivity are they really going to care if they're getting, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 uh, FPS less on the 0.1% lows and also the average FPS? I personally, as someone who prioritizes video editing, for instance, for YouTube, I look at these numbers and I'm like, well, I really don't need this. I'm not at a skill level in any of these titles that I've shown here today to justify any of that extra FPS. And so if you're an at most pro at the top of your game, you've probably already got the Ryzen 7 5800X3D, or you've probably got the i9-13900K, and you've already tuned that thing as well. Because here's another thing that we've got to go into here. Uh, AMD showed with their own numbers with the Ryzen 9 7950X3D that it was beating out the i9-13900K. And it was doing so with about 5.6%. When I looked over all these numbers, uh, they looked absolutely fine they looked correct but one thing they did was they set the 6000 megahertz on the i9 13900k and that's the thing about that cpu is it can go much higher with its memory clocks in fact i could easily take an i9 13900k here to 7200 megahertz just with two clicks in the bios and the however the 7950x3d you can really only take that to 6000 megahertz you try go to 6200 megahertz the whole thing can be unstable. If you're lucky to have silicon that can go to 6200 megahertz, you might be able to go to 6400 megahertz, but it caps out around those memory speeds. So even with those numbers that AMD themselves presented, you've got a CPU here that's not offering massive strides in gaming performance over what's already out there. And I'd say if you're looking for really good FPS, that higher tier of FPS, but looking for the best value, then the Ryzen 7 5800X3D 
already gives you that and you can couple it with cheaper DDR4 memory and a cheaper motherboard. Of course, you do have the path there with AM5 to upgrade in the future, but you wise as well get the 7800X 3D anyhow and save that money and use it for the upgrades in the future if that's what you want. And the final thing is when we compare this CPU to the Ryzen 9 7950X, it's also even more constricted in that we really can't change anything in the BIOS, at least the BIOS that I had here. And the Ryzen Master will really only let us set in an eco mode, which will drop the power consumption down actually significantly, which is good for many ITX users. Actually, I'll quickly throw up some uh, power consumption and temperature numbers here for you. But these power consumption and temperature numbers are pretty much static. You can't change them. And this CPU, much like the Ryzen 7 5800X3D, is pretty much just set at a certain level. But at least with the 5800X3D, we could slightly undervolt that. In this case, the best I could do in undervolting it at its default clocks was lock in a lower load line calibration, which dropped the power consumption down 2 watts in Cinebench. Though the final thing to talk about is if you are a competitive gamer and you're looking for the best 1% and 0.1% lows, then take a look around. There's a lot of options. All three options in today's video will give you a really awesome experience. And I'm sure if you sat even the best of pros down side by side on these different system configs and they didn't know what system they were playing on, they would have a very tough time to tell you which one is which if they could even do that since the FPS is so high. So if I was uh, looking for value even with getting the best competitive experience, I'd be looking at the Ryzen 7 5800X3D or just waiting for the Ryzen 7 7800X3D or getting, say, a 13600K and just tuning that for the absolute maximum FPS. So this just makes ultimately the Ryzen 9 7950X3D just stuck in a really hard spot right now, especially in the current economic climate where money is becoming tighter and so people are watching what they spend. And since we're on that note of watching what we spend, the 7950X, for example, can be had for $100 cheaper. The 7900X, these are the non-X3D models, can be had for $450. And the 7700, for instance, that can be had for $330. So all these models offer actually higher clock speeds out of the box. So if you're looking at them for productivity first, they're going to do a better job at that. But we will have that full review coming very soon. So stay tuned for that. But with that aside, guys, I would just wait. If you're wanting this performance that you're seeing here today, I just wait for that Ryzen 7 uh, 7800X3D. Though do let us know in the comments section below what you guys think. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here. And it comes from TRH2243 and they ask, at 15 minutes and 30 seconds, did you mean 48 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz? So they're talking about our Windows 11 optimization guide where when you're setting your sound levels, I usually just set them to 48 kilohertz. However, after we did that video, we did realize that there was a few games that are coming out with 96 kilohertz audio support. So if your sound system can allow you to lock in 96 kilohertz, 24 bit, you may wish to do that. But for the majority of video games, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz is going to give you the full listening experience from your audio equipment. Hope that answers that question. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech, yes, content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. Atomic. Power.